While insisting they were working to get aid into Gaza, those against the United States standing alone blocked the Security Council from passing a resolution that would do just that. The U.S. ambassador insisted that the draft was incomplete. The United States is disappointed this resolution made no mention of Israel's rights of self-defense. Like every nation in the world, Israel has the inherent right of self-defense as reflected in Article 51 of the U.N. Charter. The resolution did condemn Hamas's October 7th attack and the taking of civilian hostages, as well as demanding pauses in the fighting for aid deliveries. After several days of negotiations, 12 council members voted for it, many pointing out that civilians, humanitarian workers, and medical facilities must be protected under international humanitarian law. Faced with heinous terrorist acts against Israeli civilians, with the forceful reaction to such acts and an ever-growing humanitarian disaster imposed on Gaza, the council response we proposed was robust and balanced. U.N. officials echoed the Secretary General's call for an immediate ceasefire, while warning violence could spread throughout the region. I fear that we are at the brink of a deep and dangerous abyss that could change the trajectory of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, if not of the Middle East as a whole. Many members of the Security Council vowed to keep working towards consensus and a resolution. But Russia, taking a page from the West's playbook, suggested they bring the issue to the General Assembly instead for a vote, where no country has veto power. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, the United Nations.